So, hello everyone, thanks for having me here today. I'm here to talk to you about citizen science and particularly the results from our Edible Gardens project. So, in our vision of a sustainable future, urban agriculture is widely perceived as this sort of scalable approach to improving urban food security. We've got really grand plans for what cities of the future are going to look like, and urban food seems to play a really big part in what we think will happen. Yet we still know very little about all the different ways that people grow food currently. We know very little about how it's working right now. So how do we plan, how do we expect to get to this future vision if we don't know where we are? Even though home gardens are the most prevalent form of urban food gardens, they remain severely understudied. This is due to their huge diversity. Everyone grows food in different ways. Different gardening practices, different gardening approaches, it's all different. Then, they're widely spread over geographic areas. They're wherever people are, wherever homes are. And they've got really low physical accessibility and visibility. You could be walking past the most beautiful garden and you wouldn't ever know it because it's behind a fence or in someone's backyard. Past research has tried to kind of overcome these challenges in a few different ways. They've done it by creating experimental gardens, so making gardens themselves that they could access and control. Or they've done it by creating computerized models of gardens where they've based it on small data sets or commercial sort of inputs and yields. So you can see why that might not be strictly on the mark. Um, and the research that has been conducted really on sort of on community gardens and home food gardens has only been about 12 recent studies and then maybe a handful from back in the 70s and 80s. So we're talking really small amounts of actual measurement, of actual data. And some of the people, some of the projects that have tried to record this data, it's very hard to record all of the inputs going in. So people have included costs, but not all costs. Or they managed to get people to weigh food, but not include the time they spent. And water, particularly, has just not been measured. One study from 1985, that's it. Water use is very unknown. But another approach that, of course, can help us overcome these things is citizen science. So citizen science enables a large cohort, a cohort of gardeners to collect data on the diverse variety of gardening practices they use over an extended period of time. And this is super useful because I'm one scientist and our team is kind of three people and we cannot get to every garden and say, hello, can we please collect data every day and mm -hmm. every week and maybe every month and actually could that be a year? Would that be okay? So it just, it's a bit hard. This is where the Edible Gardens project comes in. We launched the project in September 2016 and we wanted to learn more about the productive capacity and social value of urban agriculture in South Australia. So this is strictly a South Australian kind of based project because that's, that's what we could work with, that's what we thought we could accomplish. And it's a Discovery Circle project and also a project of the University of South Australia. So we've used two methods. The first was just an online social survey. We wanted to get a really good sort of background data on how people were doing this. So we asked some questions about what motivates them to grow food, uh, what value they think they get out of it, who they learnt from, any challenges they experience. Then we asked them to describe their current garden setups, so the size of it, the production methods. And finally, we asked them to estimate how much time, money and water they thought were going into their gardens and whether they thought they were saving money. We've had more than 400 responses and it's been this real um, age range of gardeners, which is wonderful. The second phase is in-field garden data collection. So even though about 70% of the survey respondents said, yeah, I want to collect data, we had to kind of whittle that down a little bit because that's a lot. Um, so at the moment we have about 60 registered gardens. And this map in the background is a Google My Map that we've got of all the survey respondents' postcodes and the coloured bits of the local government areas around Adelaide. And this is quite zoomed in on Adelaide. But our survey responses spread much further than just sort of Adelaide Metropolitan. We've got um, survey responses from Mount Gambier, Port Lincoln, Port Augusta, down past Victor Harbour. So we've got a really good range. And this helps us make sure that we're not just getting one type of gardener for one type of area. This is our process for selecting the participants to collect in-field garden data. 
So we look at their sort of their survey responses and I put them into my Excel spreadsheet and I say, oh, okay, well, we need more small gardeners or we need more beekeepers or we need more people who use this gardening practice. So that way I can try and ensure that we're getting the full range of all these different kinds of things. Then we send them an email invitation and ask them to register their gardens on the Edible Gardens website. So they get to give their garden a name, they get to write a bio, some of them are pretty funny, um, and they also get to put up a profile picture. So these are some that we've pulled off. We ask them as they register to pick what garden areas they want to collect. So some fruit trees might be one area, chicken coop might be another, and a raised garden bed might be a third. They can have up to four for each garden. Then they request their data collection toolkit. We ask them about all those areas, the sizes, how they're watered, all of that. And we have to try and customize a data collection toolkit to every garden. So they record five things, how much time they spend on different gardening activities, how much money they spend on the garden, any water that goes in, the weight of what they harvest, and to track any produce that they give to households, like to people outside of their households. Water has been the funnest input to measure of all, of course. From our survey, we learned that our participants are using five different water sources to water their gardens, interchangeably, typically two at least. And then they're applying that water via six different irrigation methods. And normally they're using three of these. So you can tell from my nice tangled lines that all of this makes for some interesting customization challenges for us. Here's our data collection toolkit. We start with our post bag. We give them a clipboard with blank data sheets and instructions, guidelines on how to collect data and enter it into the online system, all of that. A spring balance to weigh what they harvest, or they can also use a digital scale if they've got one at home. And then their water. So if they have one mains tap or a simple system, we can kind of get away with just sending one little digital water meter. So these are really simple and easy to use. They click straight onto the tap, um, easy to read, and they reset back to zero. If the garden's a bit more complicated, they might need two. But what if they have a rainwater tank? And what if that rainwater tank doesn't have a pump? So of course, the flow rate of the water is low, the pressure is low, these little meters can't handle it. Or if they have a drip irrigation system that's like 20 meters long that way, it doesn't work either. So we needed something a bit more robust. You might recognize these as household water meters out the front of every house block. Here in Australia, we've got one of these. And SA Water kindly donated a bunch of these to us. You can see from the big plastic things on the end that they required a fair bit of adaption to get them down to sizes that we could use. And then, of course, they're really heavy, so they have to lie on the ground. So you have to give them like an extension cord. And some of them need splitters. Some of them need extra reducers to fit different irrigation lines. And if the garden's really complicated, they might need four water meters. Mm -hmm. So this is one potential toolkit. Times that by 60 people, and it's, it's been fun. It's been good. I tell you this not to scare you or put you off urban agriculture research, but just to help you understand that it's sort of, it's a complex urban system in its own right. Home food gardens are so everyday and common that people forget just how diverse they can be. And we really need to take that diversity into account if we're going to conduct sort of rigorous research on them. But the data and the results are worth it. So I'm just going to show you some total results from all our gardeners. This is from our 60 gardens over 17 months, 10,000 data entries into our little online database thing. And all up, people have spent 2,431 hours. 666 kiloliters of water, that's, that's lots, that's not liters, that's kiloliters. $8,700, and that's not setup costs mostly, that's just sort of ongoing things. And 3,650 square meters of land. So all of this together has produced 3.4, I can do this, imperial tons of produce, of fruits, vegetables, herbs, eggs, all of that. That makes about 3.7 US tons, I think. So lots, lots of food. And of that 3.4 tons, 40% was shared with others outside of their own gardens. So that's pretty special. Every part of our project is online. 
uh, participants sort of their registration page is linked to where they put their data in, is linked to these results charts. So they enter data, the results are instantly available for them to see and play with online. This is one example of comparing four different gardens. You can compare your garden with other gardens, or you can just compare your garden areas. All of their data is downloadable, shareable on social media, um, and you can save it all for yourself. I encourage you to go and have fun playing with these because they're pretty cool. <laughs> Take home messages is that yes, urban agriculture is incredibly diverse. But by using a citizen science approach and crafting this interactive, supportive online interface, we've managed to kind of overcome most of the challenges. And is successfully gathering a broad range of productivity and social data on urban food gardens across South Australia. So we're hoping to take this further. We're hoping to form sort of guidelines for people, bigger linkages. This is really like the first step to give us something to work with for the future. Thank you for listening. <laughs>